In the beginning, there was peace in the garden. In the beginning, there was attraction. Adam was attracted to the beauty, the peace, and the goodness God had created for him. God forced nothing on Adam and Eve. They were attracted to God and his perfect creation. There were no rules. Well, save one. Satan was in the garden as well, but Adam and Eve, they were not attracted to him. Satan didn't create or display any of the goodness or the beauty of God, but he possessed a tool that proved more potent than attraction. You see, he had the power of persuasion. We're all guilty of persuasion, aren't we? We try to persuade our kids, our employees, and our friends. We try to persuade them to be more like what we want them to be. After all, we believe we know what's best for others. But if we reflect for a moment, we realize we hardly know what's best for us. To be persuaded, a person must have a reason, a belief, or an internal agreement that they need to change, to act differently, to think differently from what they're already doing. We're persuaded either from another person trying to persuade us or from some attraction we encounter that makes us want to change. For example, we may be changed when we encounter goodness and beauty in life. The Apostle Paul did that. He wrote these words in the Bible. I am persuaded, he said, yes, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, and nor other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God. That's what he said, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, Paul was not persuaded by someone telling him these things. No, he watched Jesus defy nature. He walked on water. He healed those who couldn't be healed. He watched Jesus as he forgave him as well as others that rejected him. He watched Jesus step out of death back into life. The acts of Jesus demonstrated the goodness and the beauty and the love and grace of God and Paul was attracted, which persuaded him. However, today we allow other things to persuade us, don't we? We see it everywhere. The internet tries to convince us, salesmen try to convince us, religion tries to convince us. The act of persuasion becomes apparent when we hear words from other people like, uh, what do you need and what can I help you with? You know, these expressions from people precede the words and actions that you and I are then meant to listen to them so that they can change us to what they think is best for us. In many cases, I guess, persuasion is sincere. It's heartfelt from dear friends who just truly want to help. But nevertheless, these methods of persuasion, while sometimes sincere, attempt to manipulate our thoughts and actions. We become sort of stalkers in the lives of other people, don't we? It's the same form of persuasion, I guess, that Satan used in the garden. But there is another way the way God persuades us, by attraction. When we do less to persuade and more to demonstrate goodness, beauty, and love, then our need to force others through persuasion just simply stops. People around us will simply be attracted to the beliefs, the actions, the very nature that we display. People are going to feel empowered rather than fearful. They're going to feel joyful rather than ashamed or guilty. People are no longer going to view us as stalkers anymore. No, we're going to stand in one place. We're going to do our thing, and we're going to become the hunted. <laughs> when the atmosphere around you and I, in our voice, in our looks, when it's no longer judgmental and it's less intrusive and it's more caring and more loving and more meaningful, then attraction is going to fill the need that others have, and they're going to say, I am persuaded. Thanks for listening, my friends. We need to be more like this. Bye for now.